When the pandemic hit, we are desperate. We turn to anything that increase our chances of survival, including supplements to boost our immunity. The demands for supplements has grown as people put their faith into it to elude COVID-19. In the US alone, the market value for supplements grew from 48 billion in 2019 to 52 billion in 2020 and is projected to reach 58 billion this year. I'm very sure similar trends are happening in many countries, including Singapore, Indonesia, Malaysia, and I believe in other countries as well. Hi everyone, this is Dr. Tony Stiobudi, an orthopedic surgeon from Mount Elizabeth Hospital, Singapore. In this video, I want to talk about vitamin D. Can it really protect us from COVID-19? What is the evidence? And what is the danger if you are taking too much of it? Welcome to my channel. If you are new here, please help me to subscribe. I will continue to share medical information that is accurate, up-to-date, and trustworthy in a language that you all can understand. Why vitamin D? Vitamin D is very special. It has been associated with numerous health benefits. It is like one vitamin cures all. It has been established that vitamin D is important for bone and muscle. Along with calcium, it helps prevent osteoporosis. There is also growing evidence that vitamin D has a role in boosting the body's immune system. A systematic review published in 2017 that analyzed 25 randomized control trials concluded vitamin D helped prevent acute respiratory tract infections. And because of that, vitamin D is perhaps the most talked about vitamin during this pandemic. Can vitamin D really protect us from COVID-19? Several research have been done to prove the protective effects of this vitamin against COVID-19. Some studies have shown that people who are hospitalized with severe COVID-19 also have vitamin D deficiency. A study by David Meltzer published in JAMA Network Open in September last year found the relative risk of getting COVID-19 was 1.77 times greater for patients who were vitamin D deficient compared with those with sufficient levels. While these studies raise hope among some researchers, others are skeptical, including myself. Most of these studies are observational studies with a low level of evidence. Unlike the gold standard randomized control trials, which are level one evidence, much of the available evidence only show association and not causation. And even so, these results are mixed. There are some confounding factors, such as those with higher vitamin D levels are likely to pay more attention to their health and of higher social economic status. And these people are generally more compliant to the health safety protocols, which in itself is protective against COVID-19. Furthermore, the risk factors for developing severe COVID-19 are the same as those for developing vitamin D deficiency. So it is difficult to tell if vitamin D deficiency itself is the cause of severe COVID-19. Now, is there strong evidence to support taking vitamin D during the pandemic? A Cochrane review published in last May, a few months ago, is probably the highest evidence so far to answer this question. It assessed the use of vitamin D as treatment for adults with confirmed COVID-19 compared with a placebo. 
Three studies with 356 participants were analyzed in this review. It concludes that there is not enough evidence to recommend taking vitamin D to fight off COVID-19. A review of research by NICE, National Institute of Health and Care Excellence in the UK, suggests there is no evidence to support taking vitamin D supplements to prevent or treat coronavirus. However, it is reasonable to get enough of it for other health benefits. It is important to keep people as nutritionally fit as possible during this pandemic. What is the recommended dietary intake for vitamin D? The endocrine society regards vitamin D levels of between 30 to 100 nanogram per milliliter as sufficient. It recommends vitamin D intake of 1,005 to 2,000 international units per day for adults. Michael Holick, an expert in vitamin D research, in his paper recommends us to maintain serum vitamin D at least 30 nanogram per milliliter and preferably between 40 to 60 nanogram per milliliter. It is to minimize the risk of COVID-19 infection and its severity. This recommendation sounds very sensible. With more people staying indoors during the pandemic and get less sun exposure, some may have been more deprived of vitamin D. People with dark skin may not be getting enough, even if they spend time outdoors. This group of people may want to speak to their doctors and check their baseline vitamin D levels. High dose vitamin D, is it safe? Some experts recommend high dose vitamin D of 10,000 international unit per day or even more to reach serum vitamin D levels of more than 100 nanogram per milliliter during this pandemic. If you look at your vitamin D blood test report, it is always mentioned that possible toxicity can occur above a level of 100 nanogram per milliliter. So it is prudent to adhere to this parameter to avoid vitamin D poisoning. Those people taking high dose vitamin D must be careful because vitamin D is fat soluble. Unlike vitamin C which is water soluble. There is a risk of getting too much that can lead to toxicity which can be harmful. A lot of people believe taking supplements is safe. Supplements do not come with a prescription or warning about the possible side effects. Actually, they also contain active ingredients that can have strong biological effects and can cause toxicity that can be dangerous and even life-threatening in some situation. Too much vitamin D can cause toxicity. Approximately 8,000 cases of vitamin D toxicity are reported annually to the American Association of Poison Control Centers. Of all vitamins, of course, vitamin D is by far the most common cause of poisoning. The campaign of high-dose vitamin D in the last two decades has been the culprit of this phenomena. Never believe that high-dose vitamin D is safe, especially if your serum vitamin D level is above 100 nanogram per milliliter. So do not underestimate vitamin D toxicity. Some people even advise vitamin D levels above 150 nanogram per milliliter are safe, not toxic, and expect poisoning to occur only when the vitamin D levels rise above 300 nanogram per milliliter. But wait a minute, I will show you the medical literature to debunk this misinformation. What levels of vitamin D can cause toxicity? In an article titled Development of Vitamin D Toxicity from Overcorrection of Vitamin D Deficiency, a review of vitamin D toxicity was carried out. 
20% occurs in infants and children. One third of the cases are caused by incorrect labeling. The actual content of vitamin D can be as high as 4,000 times higher than what was mentioned in the label. This is a very serious mistake. This incorrect labeling occur in the US and Turkey. Two thirds of the cases occur because the dose is way too high beyond the recommendation. There are 13 case reports mentioned here. Nine of them reported vitamin D toxicity below the levels of 300 nanogram per milliliter. The lowest level ever reported to cause toxicity was 103 nanogram per milliliter, slightly above 100 nanogram per milliliter. The detail of this case can be found in the article titled Excess Good Can Be Dangerous. Patient number 13, a 42 year old male, received vitamin D injections from a general practitioner to improve the general health. This case happened in India. This patient received injections of 600,000 international unit vitamin D for 5 to 7 times within 1 year. Probably this patient received 3,600,000 unit within a year. Per day is about 9,900 international unit. This patient had symptoms of vitamin D toxicity with a calcium level of 11.1 milligram per deciliter. So my advice to you all is do not go near a level of 100 nanogram per milliliter or a daily dose of more than 10,000 international unit per day to avoid vitamin D toxicity. What are the signs of vitamin D toxicity? Vitamin D toxicity is related to hypercalcemia. Most patients experience nausea vomiting, constipation, some complain of muscle weakness and even depression, decreased appetite and dehydration. They feel thirsty and consequently drink a lot of water. These are signs of vitamin D poisoning, very non-specific. If you are unwell, you will have at least one of these symptoms. Therefore, many people never think these symptoms occur because of vitamin D toxicity. Vitamin D overdose in the long run can cause complications such as kidney stones, even kidney failure, and calcium deposits in the coronary arteries and heart valves, arrhythmia or irregular heartbeat, pancreatitis, and even death. So do not underestimate vitamin D toxicity. In conclusion, number one, vitamin D is important for bone and muscle. It can boost the body's immune system, but there is no evidence to support taking vitamin D supplements to prevent or treat coronavirus. Number two, we need to consume vitamin D according to the endocrine society recommendation and maintain a serum vitamin D levels of between 30 to 100 nanogram per milliliter. But it is safe to aim between 40 to 60 nanogram per milliliter. And number three, high dose vitamin D can cause vitamin D toxicity. It can happen when a serum vitamin D level rises above 100 nanogram per milliliter. Its consequences can be serious. A prompt treatment is required to avoid complications of hypercalcemia. I hope this information is useful to all of you. Don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, and share this video. I'm Dr. Tony Stiobudi. Thank you so much for listening. Stay safe and see you again in my next video. Bye-bye.